Welcome to Linear Light Podcast Section. Visit our website linearlight.com. Light and Talk with Carolina Sterzi. Museum Lighting. How to strike the right balance between levels of conservation and fruition needs. Welcome back to Linear Light Podcast Section. I would like to welcome our guest today, Carolina Sterzi, lighting designer at Studio ZNA London will be talking to us today about museum lighting and materials. Hello everyone. Thanks a lot Silvia and Linea Light for inviting me to the podcast. Today I would like to talk with you about conservation and lighting. In the lighting design of a museum, there are a number of challenges to face and parameters to be respected. One of these is the conservation levels of the works of art. What does this mean? What the conservation levels are Let's start from the beginning. The light in a museum is very important and very dangerous at the same time. You cannot enjoy a collection of objects or an exhibition without any lighting, but at the same time, light also means damage. To reduce the light damage and conserve the objects, it's important to control the amount of light. We know that the intensity of visible light is measured in lux. One lux means one lumen per square meter. It has been demonstrated that 50 lux is the minimum amount of light needed to see a shape or a color of an object. Therefore, 50 lux has been set as the maximum levels recommended for sensitive objects, such as textiles, drawings, watercolor, black and white photographs, and of course, paper. The Society of Light Handbook, produced in 2009, gives a very clear guideline to the maximum levels of light a material can be subjected to, and those are called conservation lux levels. Today we are going to talk specifically about a very particular material, that is paper. Paper is a hygroscopic material that exchanges various substances with the environment and, like any organic material, is subject to oxidative processes. What precautions should we take when lighting an antique book, an old poster or a miniature? We know that light causes permanent and irreversible damage. Often in the museum you can see books with yellowed paper or faded writings or even with discolored images. There are different ways a lighting designer can use to limit the amount of damage done to a collection. 1. Reduce the amount of visible light. As we said before, 50 lux, it's the maximum levels light recommended for very sensitive works such as books or works on paper. Keeping the lux levels below this threshold helps to reduce the lighting damage. 2. Reduce the time an object is exposed to the light. For example, with an occupancy sensor, a light can detect the presence of a person and turn on and off automatically. This device has become very popular in the museum recently, being able to reduce sensibly the accumulative damage of the light on the objects. 3. Being able to control the daylight. There are several options for managing levels of daylight in a building, but first, it's essential to avoid any direct sunlight on top of the objects. I don't mean to cut daylight completely from the museums. On the opposite, I really like when you go inside a gallery space and instead to be dark and gloomy, it's bright and it's connected with the view outside. But I think it's important to control the daylight. And we can do that with the use of UV films applied directly on window glass. Also with curtains with different levels of opacity and blackout blinds on windows reveal can be really helpful. Also because they can be set up and down with a daylight sensor. So it does mean that the blinds are on only when the daylight levels are very strong. Four, another way to control the lighting damage is the use of light fittings with dimmerability. It's very convenient to be able to set precisely the lux levels once focus the light on the objects. And the dimmer function allow a precise control of the light source. And five, lastly, being able to control the intensity of the light 
also choosing the correct beam angle of the light fittings. Sometimes in a museum you can't afford to buy new lighting equipment so you're using the stock lighting and not always you can get the exact beam angle you decide for like the specific object you are lighting. So you need to find a new escamotage, like some tricks to be able to light the object at the best. Sometimes when you are lighting a book, a spotlight with narrow beam is not the ideal, but you can point the spotlight to a flat surface and use the reflected light instead of creating uh, bright spots on top of the books. In fact, a diffuse lighting and a uniformity light on top of the books is the best light for lighting those kind of objects. Given that lighting levels are very, very low, how can you design an adequate ambient lighting that creates both an aesthetic harmony and a functional space for the user's visit? When designing for museums and galleries, the conservation requirements of the collection must be integrated into the design solutions. Starting from the concept to the completion of your job, often identified with the lighting focus on site. It's important to understand the need for the eye to refresh when the works are viewed at low levels. And this choreography of luminance is delivered in the final presentation of the space, so that the objects remains key priority in the visual field. When you start your design, it's very important to know the collection and its peculiarity, the material, if the objects are light sensitive or they're not, the dimension of the objects, shapes, colors. Only investigating the collection, you can define the best light source for your project. For example, if an object is inside a vitrine, probably a mini spot or a linear LED would work better compared to an object on open display where the track light will do a better job. Choosing between light fittings, it's always depending from the objects. Where an object got a lot of details to highlight, an accentuation, a spotlight will work best compared to a uniform diffused light, typical, for example, of a book exposition. When you work with sensitive objects to reduce the light damage, the light levels are very low. It's important then to adapt some escamotage to not design a very dark space. For example, when inside a case a lot of objects have conservation lighting levels, to avoid to make it look the case very dark and gloomy, I often like to create a bright contrast on the background, adding for example a cove light or a grazer touch of light on the walls. In this way, the levels of the light on the objects are kept low, but the eye is refreshed. With low conservation levels, I like to add bright pool of light on the floor, functioning both as circulation light inside the space and ensuring some light changes inside the room to help to keep the attention always high. Before concluding today's episode, I would like to ask you one last question. Your voice shows your love for museums. So what does it mean to you to be able to follow a project of this kind? I think it's a privilege to work in such a special places and see them when no one is around. And I'm conscious that my work helps giving more value to fantastic objects, and especially in a time where people haven't been able to visit museums for such a long time. Thanks a lot, Silvia and Linea Light. It's been a pleasure to share with you a bit about my passion and experience. Thank you for joining us. Discover more on our website, linealight.com.